Um, hi everybody, uh, my name is George, I'm from Yuki. Uh, we're here for a little talk now to find out about what kind of support is available for games businesses from the government at the moment. As you're all well aware, it's been quite a strange time uh, for the economy, country at large, and there's actually quite a large package of support available to businesses of all shapes and sizes. But I think it can be a bit of a challenge navigating it and working out exactly what's right for you, how to get hold of it, and just some other support as well. There's, there's some other things around the side. So we're having a quick chat with Tim from Sheridan's about this. And Tim, thank you very much for coming along. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. Pleasure to be from here. my own home, of course. <laughs> from your own home, yeah. Before we dive into, <laughs> dive into the details, you know, how have you been finding your time in lockdown so far? It's, um, well, it's been really interesting. I actually moved back up to Nottingham to my parents' place. So that has all the perks um, and pitfalls of what you might expect with moving back into your parents' place. Um, but generally, work-wise, really happy. It's, you know, continuing to business is very much kind of as normal. All our games developer and publisher clients seem to be continuing as if as if this whole pandemic hasn't hasn't occurred. Uh, bar a few who have obviously had to move hundreds of people to working from home, which has been obviously a massive challenge. Um, I feel like the last few weeks have seen very much a kind of I say return to normality, but you know, maybe less chaotic, probably the better way to put it. Yeah. And um, certainly the first few weeks when we were going to lockdown were, were really chaotic and the announcement of the government support and the financial support, what was going to happen. And, and while they were clarifying all the details, there was a bit of a grey area for two or three weeks where no one really knew what, what that meant. But um, I feel like there's a lot of the, a lot of the information's out there now um, to allow businesses to kind of get that support, the financial support, business support they need to, to move forward. Fantastic. Yeah, and, and we, we've actually got a full post on the UK site about all of the kind of business support available so that once we've had this chat, you can go and check that as well to go and check your notes and for, for reference. But I mean, before we dive into the specifics of each individual scheme and what's available, do you want to just give me sort of a quick lowdown about some of the key things that are available and some of the key ways that businesses are being supported by government at the moment? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, the first thing I wanted to try is obviously video games tax relief, R and D tax relief, those kinds of those kinds of financial support that were already already available to games businesses. They are still available. If you're a games business that has claimed them before, for sure, keep looking at, at those to in order to claim some of your cost back or reduce your tax bill. Um, and even the you know the certification team at the BFI have made claiming video games tax relief even easier. They've simplified the application process to reflect that everyone is in lockdown. You can't get all your hard copy documents of the application for the cultural test certified. So all you need to do for that now is to submit your digital application um, and you have to follow with all the hard copy documents six months from the certification date. But it obviously makes that whole process a lot easier in terms of you just get the application in. The certification team will make sure it passes the, the cultural test. And and then you can you if you get the certificate then you'll qualify for the tax relief. So I think first and foremost that scheme is still going, while the timelines for getting the certificate and with HMRC and getting the tax credit may have extended a little bit just because everyone's working from home. It, maybe everything is a little bit slower. They're still viable tax credits R and D and creative are still getting paid out. So games businesses for, should for sure be looking at those. And I guess the other the other primary support available is in terms of other loans and debt finance from the UK government or the British Business Bank. Um, so there's a wide variety of, of those sorts of loans available from businesses big and small. Um, and there's also obviously support for employees, you know, furloughing is the word that's obviously been banded around yeah. um, that no one knew existed until um, probably about a month ago. But that, that kind of support in terms of subsidising your employees' wages is also out there and, and highly useful if you if you felt that you might have had to make made people redundant that's obviously a subsidy scheme that can basically contribute up to 80 percent of those uh, that employee's salary and also in, in um for the creatives who might be self-employed or working uh, by their own service companies they can also access this self-employed um uh self-employed that in self-employed um scheme it's as well a, which, yeah yeah sorry scheme, right? yeah exactly so that's i'm tripping over the the actual name of it but effectively mirroring 
it actually mirrors what the um, the uh, employee retention scheme is. It's just for freelancers instead. Um, the terms are very similar. So yeah, there's the, the sort of like the quick highlight. I think in terms of that's available, so we can dive into those in in a bit more detail. Yeah, I think um, that, that I think let's start at those loans first because yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're, there's essentially. To my understanding, and do please come and correct me as well if I'm, I'm, I'm wrong about this, or provide that <laughs> extra clarity. Um, so you've got the kind of the coronavirus business interruption scheme, which is for about businesses up to £5 million. Pounds. You've got the bounce yep. back loans, which are for yep. companies who are looking for about £50,000. And then you've got the large business interruption scheme loans as well, which is for, for bigger companies to take access of. Mm. Now, what, what's the difference between those? Why has the government come up with these? And what's the benefit of having these different loans available? I mean, I also want to add in there, I'm sure coming to it later, I'll add the future fund in there as well. I'm of course, not sure if that's yes. next. Um, but I mean, the, guess the, the real difference is the value of the money available and, and who they're really aimed at. Um, there was a lot of concern initially when the um, the coronavirus business interruption loan scheme, C-bills as it's called, was in, when that was introduced, there was a lot of concern that it was obviously a lot of money and not everyone was able to qualify for it or they were finding that they were being rejected. Um, and there was also, while the it's obviously a lot more clear now what the, what the terms of those loans are, but initially there was a lot of concern that um, the C-bills, the kind of the larger, the larger loan scheme came with personal guarantees depending on the lender, which for some smaller amounts people just felt it wasn't, wasn't worth it or just it seemed a bit over the top. Um, that's where the sort of differences come in with the the startup loan scheme and the bounce back scheme. Um, obviously, much lower amounts you're qualifying for, but then they also the government's kind of helped nice, nicely cover the charges, any bank charges, guarantee charges for those ones for those schemes. And there'll be differences between the interest rates as well between those schemes. Um, C bills, you're looking at a bit. Uh, bit higher there's obviously several things you have to qualify and do to qualify for them we'll go into those those the criteria a bit a, in a bit more detail but effectively i think it's the government looking at different types of businesses big and small and trying to you know trying to make sure there's something available to everyone regardless of the business knowing that you know not every business is the same um, and not everyone you know will actually be able to qualify for c bills and i think also having the different schemes available just maybe made it easier for the banks too in terms of not everyone's applying for one scheme they can filter the different types of businesses and prioritize it that way in order so that they can process and get people the money they need fantastic so in terms of the terms then of, of, of c bills you know you, you were saying that mm. to the interest you know what should people be expecting because I, I know that with a lot of people um a lot of businesses might be looking at this situation and going, you know, we need some cash right now. A loan seems mm. like a good idea, but naturally we've got the concerns of taking our loan. You know, you always have the obligations at the other side of it. You know, we're all more yeah, than aware that that is the way the world works. Um, mm. So, you know, what should people be expecting in relation to this, you know, in, in comparison to other forms of finance as well? Do you think it's sort of particularly generous? Uh, yeah, I do. I do think it is pretty, pretty generous, actually. And I think there is a very much a uh, feeling that debt, um, can hamstring a business. Usually it comes with forms of security, uh, which Siebel's does and some of the other ones don't. Um, and then that, that's kind of, and it's usually that is seen as a bad thing. Um, actually, I think that debt isn't really a dirty word or it shouldn't be seen as a dirty word. And I think it's actually a very useful form of often short term finance for plugging a gap in cash flow that might be needed. And I think Siebel's, if there's no other finance available to you, um, I think it is a very relatively cheap way of getting finance into your business um, that obviously you have to repay so down the line. Um, you know, there's a lot of practical considerations that come with debt financing. Um, we can get into those a bit later. But, you know, if you are, if you fit in that SME category, you know, you're a business with less than 250 employees, which I think covers most games in the UK bar a few, um, you know, that if you're get, there's no if you only want to up to 250 grand there's no personal guarantee so that reduces the burden a bit for smaller businesses as well um and it it just makes it it can just be a very it's just a very cost effective way of doing it interest rates are you know relatively low at the minute and if you want if you're getting a loan without security it, it, it's, it's a pretty it seems like a pretty good deal um 
also for the lend from the lenders perspective not that that's really much a concern for for, for UK members or you know I know there's a few lenders who will you know obviously they're getting 80 percent of that loan backed by the government as well so it's a good deal for them too in terms of uh, that money safe if you can't repay the loan as well okay. Exactly. And, uh, you know, like you say, with, with small, medium businesses, uh, you know, our regional economic impact report from earlier this year showed that 99.5% of games businesses fall into that category according to the government's mm. own terms. So it, it, it's particularly pertinent, actually, for this industry. But yeah. it may as well, actually, let's take a look at the bounce back loan as well, because I think yeah. that may be even more relevant, because as well as having a lot of small businesses, we have some micro businesses. And these loans they're essentially yeah. intended for amounts of about fifty thousand pounds or up to fifty thousand pounds. So they're really intended for like the smallest companies around, aren't they? Yeah, and and yeah, they were meant to fill the cracks that you know that were left by C bills and people that maybe weren't able to qualify for that. Um, and yeah, so their loans are from two thousand to to fifty thousand maximum. But then again, relatively relatively cheap in terms of there won't be any fees or interest to pay in the first 12 months and then afterwards you're only looking at an interest rate of 2.5 percent so you know obviously it does add up those those interest rates do have to be paid but there's no it's relatively cheap money to get into a company if you need to plug a, a short gap or you want to get a project off the ground and you want some emit some funding initially to help that happen um it's yeah, they're they're pretty good um, for the kind of like indie micro studios that might be looking for something or some sort of debt finance. Yeah, exactly, and I, I think it's a particularly interesting amount for those smaller studios because you know like we've heard it's been difficult to get meetings, for example, because you know harder to meet up with people face to face at your favourite games of business events and have mm. those conversations. If you're looking for some short term cash to essentially help you maybe fund yourself for a prototype phase or get you to that point where you can have a face-to-face -face meeting in the future it may well be worth considering you know it's, it certainly seems to be the right amount of money for those smaller businesses to look into um Absolutely. we've also got you know we don't have too many of them in the industry but we do have some of those larger businesses as well in terms of the larger business interruption oh. scheme so this is this is on the other side of the equation if Siebel's was kind of punted down the middle and the bounce yeah. back loans were going towards the people at the grassroots this this is for the, this is for the big players, right? This is for yeah. the biggest companies if they need help. Yeah, for sure. And I think obviously that's why they wanted to make initially make a distinction between SMEs and then the much larger companies. You know, if you've got a turnover, you know, above the forty five million, I think that cuts you off for the the standard Siebel's loan. Um, but yeah, the large business inter loan interruption scheme is if you've you know up to fifty million effectively, because you know we do have a lot of large we do. Have you know, a good number of large games businesses over here that are also worthy of that support. Um, whether I don't know how many of those games businesses have used them, I'm sure the you know the first the first thing that has been used is obviously the potentially the um, the furloughing scheme in terms of getting employee employee wages subsidised. But you know, again, having a debt having debt finance from the government. Is, is a great scheme and it, it depends on I guess in terms of how those companies have been funded before because it, you know if you've got prior security if you've already had taken debt, debt finance there can be issues and restrictions in getting that but larger companies if they if they need it yeah it's available to them as well. Fantastic so you know they're, they're safe for the sake of argument um, someone's watching this and going I'm interested in applying I'm interested yeah. in getting hold of this fund you know first of all what do they have to do practically to get themselves potentially accessing funds from the scheme and second on that wider debt financing point have you got any sort of tips for businesses potentially thinking about it maybe for the first time yeah for sure so in terms of what the anyone wanting to apply for C bills or the, or the larger scheme you know you do need to show that you've got a business case kind of like ready to go in terms of how you would use that money um but for most games businesses, I think that would be fairly straightforward to show because if you're making a game or planning on making a game, you've probably already got that business case there already in terms of, well, I need money to pay staff, fund the game, you know, buy equipment, get get software licenses in place to make it. So I think that business case is kind of like ready made for you. Um, the best way forward is obviously you've got to go through the UK government website and that will kind of like link you through to the British Business Bank and the various accredited lenders that will be funding uh, these sorts of loans. And that includes Barclays, HSBC, for example. Um, and just because you get rejected through one lender 
doesn't mean you're precluded from applying again via another lender. And I think that's kind of key in terms of people may have obviously applied for their bank that they use uh, personally and they might have been rejected and then they thought, well, that's it. I don't qualify for, for C-bills anymore as a business. And then that's just not true. There are, there are a whole host of lenders that are providing this scheme for the government. And if you haven't qualified through one lender, you can obviously explore the other lenders too. Fantastic. But, and the, pra- the practical consideration, sorry, because I know you've asked that as well. I think well, for, all of, for all of the, anyone going for debt finance, um, I think one of the key things is timing. You know, it does take time to process these things. And if you need the money immediately, you know, start immediately, start pulling the paperwork immediately. And you will probably won't know at the outset what the lender's concerns are. But if you do have prior security, i.e. you already owed, you've taken a loan or so you've given security to a different company before a third party lender you know just know you have to kind of explain that to these new lenders here um and that can obviously prolong any sort of like timeline so i think be prepared to ask the questions that the lenders might have for you and if you need the money sooner you know you need to start that process sooner Fantastic. and I think just the second thing before before I let you move on, sorry, George, no <laughs> is, no is, is, how, is how much is it going to cost you in terms of all of these facilities aren't free money. And I, I banded around that they're all relatively cheap. And I think, you know, generally speaking, they are generally, but that doesn't mean they're free. And so it's definitely worth doing your own calculations in terms of how much am I going to be paying in interest over the term of the loan? When do I think I'll be able to repay that loan? Um and if there's going to be any other impacts that you see on your cash flow coming in throughout the, the next few years before you've repaid it, that might impact you repaying it. And, you know, I'm a lawyer, so I have to think about the disaster scenario. So, you know, what what's going to happen in terms of if it all goes wrong and you can't repay the loan? I think always check those terms. Make sure you're comfortable with those and know what is going to happen if for whatever reason you're in a position and you can't repay. Of course, of course. Make sure you're covering as many angles as possible, even the ones you might not want to. Because if you think about it in advance, sure. you give yourself that security in the longer term, which is which exactly. is ideal. Um, so the job retention scheme, furloughing, you know, it's, mm. it's something that we've heard a lot about. Um, now, I know in terms of games companies, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of companies that have taken advantage of it. I'm aware of companies mm. who haven't. And I'm still aware of some people as well who've not looked at the scheme at all and would want, would want to know what it is. So can you give us a quick lowdown just about what the scheme is and how it works? For sure. So it's effectively um, the government will subsidise up to 80% of your employees' wages if you are thinking or were potentially going to make that employee or employees redundant because of coronavirus. Um, the furloughing aspect is basically just means that they that employee if you if you do take advantage of the scheme effectively they they, they can't work at all they can't take part in any sort of like paid work that would generate revenue for your company while they are furloughed on that scheme um, and I say it's a subsidy rather than like a loan it's a bit different so you are still required to pay those amounts to the employee and you will claim the eighty percent back that is owed to you that is owed through the scheme from the government at a later date. Now, they've recently, just last week, extended that furlough scheme until the end of October, uh, which I think sort of signals a little bit about how they see the timeline of this of this going. And and I think, you know, I think that's a, that's a smart thing. If people if you haven't, if you were going to make someone redundant already and you haven't, well, you know, you can still take advantage of that up to October. If you are how if you are going to furlough someone, they have to be furloughed for a minimum of three weeks. And as I mentioned before, they can't do any revenue generating work for your company during that time. And um, if you are, you, you can top up that employee's salary above the 80 percent that um, that the 80 percent you will claim back from the government. Um, although what we've seen is a lot of people reducing salaries by 20 percent, maybe making um, employees work only four days instead of five and, and then having the 80 percent cover. Um, those four days, maybe t- and then topping up a bit. That's maybe that's we're seeing that, seeing that a little bit. Um, if you have already issued a P45 to employees, then probably best seeking employment law advice about that. If in case you want to try and retract it to try and take advantage of the scheme, there's, there's no real clear way of doing that properly. So it's definitely worth looking at advice if that if you've done that. 
Of course, and uh, I'm, I'm in regards to this extension as well. So initially, the scheme was essentially going to be running up until the end of June, and right. then it's been extended onwards towards October. Um, and there was a bit of political back and forth about this. You know, was there going to be any sort of change to the scheme? Um, you know, have you got any sort of clarity upon is the scheme set to change in any way post October? Is there any or post October, post June? Sorry, mm. in the run up to October, or should people expect it to operate in the same way? Um, I actually don't have any kind of information about whether that's going to, to change or not. Um, and I believe it should continue to operate in the in the same manner that it is doing. Um, I think with all the, the things with the government, you know, obviously it could be liable to change potentially. But I think the, the intention is that it will carry on on very much the same the same grounds that it is doing at the minute. Uh, one thing, obviously, we didn't we didn't sort of touch on is the value of, of that 80 percent of the salaries. And that's that is up to it's effectively 80 percent of the employee's salary, but capped out at two and a half thousand pounds per employee um kind of an important bit should have missed should have put that at the start but um um yes obviously it's it's um it's not a it's not a perfect scheme uh, but it's certainly i think a a very a viable alternative to letting people go especially if you know down the line in a few months when you maybe have stabilized your cash flow you you don't really want to go out hiring people it's nice to know that you do have those people there ready to bring back into the business when you need them. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think there's, you know, there's a lot in terms of when facing things like recession about how the fact that businesses that do continue to invest often actually ride their way out of that recession more effectively yeah. than those who cut back really heavily because you suddenly have to rebuild from a much, much lower base if you cut back For very sure. heavily. Whereas if you're able to maybe use furloughing in conjunction with something like uh, one of the civil loans, you could end up in a position where you actually bring those employees back on once your cash flow is stabilised and you get your business back operating as it should have done with sort of mm. fairly minimum disruption. Um, you know, and I think that's the kind of the genius, I think, of what's gone yeah. on here is that the schemes actually seem quite flexible and seem to be sort of quite neatly suited to what businesses have done. So mm. fair play to the government on that part. But if it, <laughs> who knows about the rest? But, you know, this bit is <laughs> sure. Exactly. I won't go into any further comments on that. Um, but <laughs> in terms... And, and then just as well, I mean, so you've, you've kind of got the furloughing side of things. So that, that's covering yeah. those people. There's also been the self-employed element too. Um, and yeah. that, that's obviously a really big element for individuals too. How does the self-employed scheme differ? Uh, well, it does work very, obviously, fairly similarly. But there's a, the added complexity in terms of if you're self-employed, you know, obviously you should be paying taxes. You know, there's very different... Um, models for people being self-employed if they work via a service company um, they might not have paid necessarily pay themselves a salary they pay themselves a dividend um, and pay taxes that way um, so the, the real difference is you obviously as a self-employed uh, worker have to show that you have you have to show the government what your taxable profits were um, and effectively the taxable grant is the same as the, the furloughing scheme it's 80 percent but instead of your salary it's of your average monthly profits and that has been calculated was supposed to be calculated over the past three years again up to a maximum of two and a half thousand per month um, and there was a there was a whole kind of bit of hoo-ha about this at the start because you know for some um in, you know, new, self, newly self-employed, and you might not have had three years worth of of monthly profits. Well, you can still you can still claim that if you you know if you can show that you have um, a tax return for 2019. That was kind of like the cutoff, um, but it did mean that if you were newly self-employed this year, for example, you probably can't qualify for the scheme. And that was I know there's a few people I spoke to that are a bit distressed about that. Um, and, and it's unfortunate that I guess the government has to draw the line somewhere in terms of how this qualifies. Um, and, you know, they've obviously rely on that evidence. You know, they rely on you. They, they rely on the workers showing they have that trading history. So it's it's hard to say that it's fair because I know, I've, you know, I know individuals and friends who have kind of been stung by it. But I, I guess that's sort of was one of the negatives of it. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, which I've heard is a very similar thing and obviously particularly sad for, for those people. But, you know, it mm. kind of reminds us of important things 
make sure you keep as good record, set of records as you can about how your business Absolutely. is running so you've got as much evidence as possible. If you've got an accountant, now is the time for them to, to earn their crust. You know, that's a, that's a very good opportunity for them to demonstrate that they have been helping you keep the right records that you need. But I think in relation to both schemes, you know, I, I kind of tied them both in together just very quickly because they're kind of not yeah. two sides of the same coin, but, but pretty close. So mm. the key question is, um, how do you apply for them? So if you're a business looking at furloughing or an individual or very small business looking at doing the self-employed scheme, what's your route for doing so? I mean, similar, there's, there's great information available via the UK government website and um, they'll, they'll usually have links kind of like leading you through about how to kind of like claim those um, via HMRC and they should be able to, to do that. Um, Point for the edit, George, just so you know. Uh, not really. I don't have the actual like links or information through about how to get those. But I think it would actually be really useful if, you know, when the video is posted, could we get those links sure. put, yeah. put at the bottom? Because that would be really useful, I think, actually, in terms of have it like linking through to the actual scheme. Definitely. Um, yeah. Sorry, that's, I know that's messed up the video. No, 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 that's absolutely fine. So, I mean, if we if we were just going to say, so, you know, so you said there's some great links on the site. Anything, you, you know, do you want to just jump back into that point again and just say great links yeah. on the site? Governor? Yeah, so there's 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 great links uh, by the UK Gov website uh, and all the information you need on on the civil loans, um, on the self-employed income support scheme and the um, and, and the furloughing scheme. Great, great links available on the UK government website. And I think we'll include them at the, below this video just so that it's easy for everyone to find. Exactly, and we'll, we'll make sure as well. Um, if you're watching this, if you're watching this on Twitch on this live, we'll make sure that we get those links as well included in the description of the event and elsewhere, so that you can really easily access it. And of course, if you come onto our blog and check out our COVID resource, all the links are going to be there too, so you're going to be able to get hold of those nice and easily. Um, so, I'll kind of come to, I'm kind of calling it the final selection. Um, I'm, I'm calling it very much the grab bag. Um, so, this is the extra stuff that's quite useful to know about. That isn't necessarily the kind of like the key initiatives, but each of yeah. them are useful, useful to know about. So there's been a few things. So uh, I would say there's kind of a package of measures around statutory sick pay, small business rates um, and business yep. rate relief anyway, and, and even to some of like VAT deferrals. Um, you know, there, there's been a, few, a small selection of sort of almost administrative measures there. You know, what's, yes. what's the combined impact of those? What, what kind of impact does that have on businesses and their finances? I think absolutely huge, and I think another thing adding to that for anyone who was self-employed is the is the postponement of the IR35 legislation for pushing that back till next year as well. Um, that would have had a probably potentially really big big impact on both companies looking at employing freelance workers, um, of which there are many in the games industry, and also the freelancers themselves. So I think added to that, I think is is, is absolutely huge. In terms of the statutory sick pay, uh, I, I just think any kind of like financial support that the government is giving companies, especially games companies in this time, is, is absolutely huge. It's really, really useful. Cash flow can be an issue. You know, I think it's not always, not everyone is prepared for an event such as the pandemic we've, we've yeah. seen. And, you know, you can quickly see how businesses and any sort of cash can really dry up quite quickly. Um, so having anything that really helps that puts money back in the company's pockets to stop you going under is massive um i mean yeah the vat changes i think that is going to be that's going to be big deferring those deferring those payments um absolutely huge and you know it goes back to it goes back to the tax credit point again everything that hmrc is doing on that side um you know make sure you make sure you're claiming tax relief as well um you know hmrc also processing that um but yeah, going, I mean, the statutory sick pay. Effectively, what that what will happen there is they will um, the rebates will cover the first two weeks of any statutory sick pay for an eligible employee who's been off work because of COVID, um, and that's that that is currently about ninety four pounds, ninety four pounds twenty five pence per week. Um, that may be subject to some changes over the coming weeks, but that generally seems to be um, what's happened, and, and that's obviously to deal with employees who have to self-isolate because of COVID and they're supposed to obviously stay at home for those 14 days and the government will cover the, the cost of that. Yeah, which is fantastic. And I, I think that that's one of one of the key points is, you know, in of themselves, a little me you know, a measure like covering that sick pay or allowing you to defer a VAT payment by themselves, 
you know they could be quite handy but if you take as much advantage of these schemes as possible and package them all up together you can suddenly find that even a relatively small business just putting a bit of time into this you can find yourself in a, a much more secure position um, you know, give yourself that kind of support and i think as well at this point too just something else to jump in generally you know yeah. i think you were saying exactly at this moment in time there are lots of businesses struggling with these challenges at the moment so i know that there's a lot of people who are finding this quite challenging or stressful time and just to say everyone understands it everyone gets it and completely understand but but don't worry too much from that sense we've seen huge businesses enormous entire sectors of the economy challenged by this so if Absolutely. you're facing these challenges we completely understand we're here to help at uki and i'm sure you know people like, like tim as well oh. you're, you're more than there to help too um but that just leads me into i think a final one it's not necessarily to say I say it's niche, but it, it's perhaps a little bit more off the beaten track. So you mentioned it earlier. So the future fund um, sure. and there's a, there's some separate relief as well around sort of very innovative R and D driven businesses, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, and I guess that comes back to the funding challenges for for games businesses. You know, I, I think largely the message that you read in the games press is that games is having a great time. It's absolutely booming. And obviously that is true, you know, mobile revenues have seen growth in, in installs, you know, in high numbers than we've ever seen before. Um, but I think one of the things that has have been affected is companies that would, especially games companies that would fund their businesses through venture capital or equity, purely because those investors, it, it's just, given the current circumstances, it's just much better. They have to focus on their current portfolio of investees. And, you know, with the markets doing you know, ups and downs, mostly downs. Um, you know, they, they're, the safer thing for those investors is they're keeping the money in their pockets. So we have heard stories of games companies having, you know, term sheets pulled. And, you know, that's a huge loss going to something like this where, you know, you don't have a publisher on the table. You know, you weren't going to go for, you didn't want to go around the debt route. You know, you had everything kind of like sort of set for equity. Um, and, and that's, you've kind of just lost that purely because, not through your own fault at all so it seems very unfair and that's sort of where the future fund has stepped in um and i think that's obviously that's really great and you know with with vc and equity companies kind of like not being able to invest as much um barring some exceptions obviously you know um galaxy interactive have been throwing throwing big money around but they seem to be the exception but the future fund is there to help companies who would were looking for equity have raised at least two hundred and fifty thousand pounds worth of equity before, so more than you would get through the um, seed enterprise investment scheme. But you might have you might have taken advantage of the EIS scheme before, um, and you might have you know raised money through any other third party investor. It doesn't have to have been a VC or a, an angel. It could be friends and family, that kind of that kind of thing as well. Um, and effectively, what this will do is. If you've had that money within the last five years, you can apply for a convertible loan of up to five million. Um, the convertible bit effectively means that it will get converted into equity um, on repayment, and it's capped at a maximum of twenty percent of the of the um, of your raise. Effectively, twenty percent of your your shares on your next qualifying raise. Um, so I think that's a really really great scheme because. Yeah, we, we're well aware we work with businesses who have lost those opportunities. So this is kind of a nice sort of way in to still make sure that you get the money you need um, in, in this time. Yeah, and I, I think, again, it, it speaks to the kind of the flexibility and, and why it's important for games. Because so, so many companies in this sector with lots of different models, you know, the challenges facing a game developer who've got a game on the market or have just released a game right now is going to be completely different to, say, uh, a games event business or a games media company, you know, who are maybe sort of finding a completely different set of challenges. So the, the main thing, I think, is just, and I guess this is sort of rounding off, it, it, is to think about all of this different support and try and work out what works best for your business and, and pull it all together. Um, so, I mean, what would be your advice then as you're sort of final tip in relation to all of this mm. if, if if i was sitting in that position as a business and being like i don't really know where to start with all of this how would you go about advising someone to say here's the best way to get it all of the relevant bits of funding that you might need mm. well i think the first thing is making sure you know you figure out what kind of funding is right for you um you know pandemic aside i think you know games businesses if you're looking to grow you're looking to build your business whether you're a developer, publisher, you know, events company, it's kind of knowing how much you need 
and and you know your timeline for it and, and kind of what you want so i think i'd always encourage games businesses to well figure out do i want equity can i can i still get equity outside of the government loan schemes outside the outside of um outside of seeking government support um am i comfortable in taking debt you know how much is the, any sort of finance i'm taking going to cost me and does it make, does it meet my timeline and ultimately does any finance i get is it enough is it going to give me what i need to you know is it going to help me with my cash flow is it going to keep me afloat is it going to be enough for the next few months or however long this this carries on so i think b- before even like diving into those schemes figure out you know those sorts of basics in terms of actually how much you need take a step back from it and think about how you want to go forward once you know how much you sort of need and your timeline i think that does automatic kind of crosses off some options you know equity can be quite quick but then you need to you need to have the contacts with you know the vcs the angels and as we mentioned earlier they might not be funding right now or you might be you know leaving yourself open to a reduced valuation of your company which might be okay if it gets you the money you need but that's something to be aware of um so then you may be looking at debt but those doors might be closed to you if you've already got um if you've already taken previous uh debt financing you've already got security there in which case if you can't if that is going to preclude you from speaking to a new lender you know go back to the people who've already funded your business see what they do see if there's any options there yeah. And if you can't get these, if you aren't going to be looking at getting those loans or debt finance, I think that's when you look at the grab bag and the other kind of ancillary things that will that will help you out. So that's looking at the um, well, if you if you're a user, if you do have employees, you know, no one really wants to go through the whole furloughing process. But I think you know, if it has to happen, it has to happen, um, and it, it is a, it's a pretty really good subsidy from the government as well. Um, so it's, there's no real sort of like clear answer in terms of do this, do that. I think every business is going to be different, and therefore having having taken that step back, figure out how much you need and the timeline. I think is the key thing. And you know, there's good options out there as we've, we've seen. And and debt finance isn't isn't all that bad. Um, I think it has a bad rap um, purely because I think companies like Wonga and what what not, you know, with really high interest rates. And, you know, you, you have the, the disaster story of people sending the bailiffs around. You yeah. know, I think the fact that this coming through the government, obviously, it's a very legitimate scheme. I think it makes debt finance a lot more accessible for what is, you know, I say, relatively cheap um, rate. Fantastic. Excellent. And, and fantastic advice. So thank you so much for joining us, Tim. Just one quick extra thing. People want to get in touch with you. You know, where are you on social media? Sure. Uh, well, you can get me on, on email at tim.davis at sherwins.co.uk. Um, I'm also on Twitter at T-A-G Davis. Um, yeah. And just, and yeah, and just Tim Davis on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm, I'm all over that. Oh, fantastic. Well, Tim, thank you so much for, for joining us for this chat. It's been really, really useful. Pleasure.